me, Lisa here with The Handmaidens, and I am just checking in. It is the ending of the first week of 2022. I hope you all have enjoyed the beginning of the new year, um, and I hope you all are keeping up with your New Year's resolutions. I made one, and it was to make at least one YouTube video and check in with you guys a week. Uh, it is now, I've pushed it to the very last second and I, it's crunch time. So I'm making bread today um, because I, I kind of ran into a situation. I don't know um, how you all source your food, but I have been getting quite lazy because I had a baby in 2020. So my hands have been a little full. Uh, so I've been slacking on the homestead and one thing that I cut out was bread making. And it just because I, you know, I like to hand knead and all of that and it wasn't, it wasn't happening with the baby. So I cut that out. Well, the other day I went to go run, being lazy to the store and grab a, ba a bag of bread, a loaf of bread for my daughter to make her school lunch for in the morning. And lo and behold, there was no bread on the shelves. We live in a little small town and uh, we have a little dollar store and a little gas station. So it's a sweet little town, but we don't really have access to a big grocery store. Um, so in a way it's kind of difficult, but that's only because I wasn't living my life properly and you know practicing what I preach, which is just completely being self-sufficient. As the world keeps turning and changing, I don't know if you've realized, but I've noticed um, in, in our area at least that prices have fluctuated. I've gone to the store and I cannot uh, find things at the store that, you know, it's just, it's not a given that it's gonna be on the shelf. Uh, I've gone to big stores. I go across the border to a city to go do my big grocery shopping and each time I've gone there, there hasn't been, you know, meat product that I've been looking for. I've had to scrounge and rethink what I'm gonna, you know, what I'm gonna put on the table for my whole family for the week. And it's becoming quite difficult. So now it is, I could sit there and cry about it, or I could, you know, put on my big girl pants and I could start doing what I know how to do, and that is to be self-sufficient and live off the homestead and completely um, turn, my, turn my head to whatever these big uh, companies are going through and how it's affecting us, the people. It is our turn now to take responsibility for our lives and do what needs to be done to feed our families and it is to learn simple things like how to make bread because bread is i don't know i love gluten okay <laughs> and we eat a ton of bread so it is something that is essential to us and i'm if it is essential to your family i hope you really take the time to watch this video or videos like this and um click that subscribe button because 2022 is going to be the year that all of the handmaidens have, you know, made an agreement that we are going to teach our little tricks, uh, which are simple, you know, it's just relearning a different, it's a new way to live and it's a good way to live. And we want to share our little secrets with you. So click that subscribe button. And now let's get started on making bread. Today we are going to make a a old world bread. It is a simple sandwich bread. Um, and it is, it originated from uh, the Pennsylvania Dutch Amish was where the recipe originated. It is a uh, milk bread that you can, you can use any kind of milk you want. If you are 
a vegetarian and or, or a vegan, you can totally switch up and and I'm gonna use butter and I'm gonna use milk, but you can use your substitutes work perfect in this uh, recipe. So don't, don't go away, you're included in this too. All right, so we are going to start with, I am going to use my mixer, but I will also show you how to knead the dough first. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a flat surface if you're gonna be hand kneading. You are gonna need your mixer if you're going to be mixing with your kneading hook on your, let me get this over here, let's see, on your mixer, okay? So you are going to need a spoon, right? Because we're gonna stir everything in first. And I'm gonna show you, we're gonna go through this whole process. Hopefully I can fit it all on my phone. All right, so we have the mixer, we have the spoon, we have, what are we gonna do now? Let's go into, oh, I have a bowl for, uh, that I have greased with olive oil. It's just a tablespoon, uh, not a tablespoon, excuse me, a teaspoon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put all of the ingredients and everything that I do, I'm gonna put in the comments too. So, so just kick back and relax and enjoy and watch. So I have, a teaspoon of olive oil. I've greased the bowl. This comes later, but just have it ready, okay? It's good to have everything ready when you get started. I have in this bowl, I have a teaspoon and a half of, a t I'm sorry, a tablespoon and a half of yeast. If you're using the packet yeast, you're gonna use that's that is just it's just two packets of of the the yeast, okay? I have in this bowl. I have three ingredients. I have a tape a teaspoon of salt in there. I have two tablespoons of softened butter, not melted, soft, and I have a tablespoon of packed brown sugar. The reason I have well, there's two reasons. Two reasons that I have the yeast separated from all of the other ingredients is because you cannot touch when it is at a dry point, your yeast to your salt. The salt will deactivate the yeast. So try to keep them separate. Whenever you're making any kind of bread, you wanna keep your yeast separate from your salt until you've had a liquid ingredient mixed, okay? Now we have two cups in here, dun, 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 dun. I don't know if you can see, it doesn't really matter, it's milk. All right, we all know what milk looks like. I have two cups of milk. Next, I have a total of six cups of flour, but I have them separated. I have four cups in one bowl and I have two cups in the other bowl and I will show you the reason why in a minute when we get mixing this stuff up. Okay, so, oh, and of course, as always, I have a cup of tea to keep me energized through this. So grab your cup of tea, grab your cup of wine, grab whatever it is that makes you cozy and comfy and kick back and watch this bread happen. All right, so I am just going to in my mixer bowl, I am going to add the other ingredient that I forgot to tell you about. I am going to add a one fourth cup of water. And the water has to be around 100 degrees because that is going to activate the yeast, we're going to activate the yeast in here, okay? So I'm gonna take my yeast, don't go too hot with it, don't think the hotter the better it's gonna activate because you can also, if you go too hot with the water, you can kill your yeast. So, so keep it, try to keep it like warm water, okay? If you're living in a city, unfortunately, you don't wanna use the chlorinated water because that will kill your yeast too. Little tips. All right, so I'm gonna add my yeast in to my quarter cup of 100 degree water. 
And I am going to, with my little spoon, I'm going to mix. I'm going to mix it, mix it in, mix it in, mix it in. And right now it's just looking, I'll show you in a minute here. I'm mixing, I'm mixing, I'm mixing. You just wanna incorporate and get all of the, it's not going to dissolve, okay, quite yet. It's gonna turn kind of like into a paste with, I got my daughter right behind me. Phoenix, would you mind zooming in here? Can we show this? I wanna show everybody what we got going on here. Okay, so see how it's kind of like water over here and then it's like all clumpy and nasty? Keep on mixing. What's gonna start to happen is we're giving it a quick stir. We're gonna make sure that everything comes off of that spoon. bubbles and I'm going to show you the bubbles. It's going to take probably about, a, see it's already starting to bubble up a little bit. So I'm gonna, but you want to make sure that it's activated and that's how you're going to get this wonderful aroma. I don't know if, um, it's really sweet and uh, it's, it's the yeast activating and to me I love the smell. You know, I, I just, it makes, it makes, gives such a homey feel. So you're going to start to see bubbles come up. And when the bubbles start, I'll show you. And you're going to get an aroma in, it's, it's the yeast activating. And you need to wait for the yeast to activate so that you can start mixing in your other ingredients. If the yeast isn't activated before you start mixing in your ingredients, you're gonna run into problems because it's gonna start, it's it's going to uh, not allow the yeast to really take off and get going and then your bread isn't going to rise. So really make sure that your yeast is activated. Now would be a good time if you are, um, if you're going to use your oven, which I recommend, using your oven to proof while you're doing your rise time, I recommend you do it in the oven. Yesterday I did it under the wood stove and I, I'll show you, I didn't get, that's how much we make bread around here now. Um, I didn't get quite as high of a rise. I mean, it's a good, it's a good bread. It's got a great crust, okay? But I didn't really, I like my bread to be um, tall, thicker, a thicker loaf so that we can, what we've grown accustomed to with sandwich bread, because we make a lot of sandwiches. So I, I when I make, when I proof in the oven, I, I set it to 200 degrees for like five or 10 minutes, just to get it nice and warm in there. And then I turn it, I turn the oven off, but you gotta do it before so that it's warm enough for the proofing. Okay, so we have some bubbles going around in here. Let me show you where we're at right now. So Phoenix, let's come down more, 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 more. Do you see how it's starting to turn into, we're getting some bubbles, we're getting some action here. Okay, we really want it to kick off. I'm actually gonna go grab a fork to see maybe if I can break up some of the clumps to uh, get it going. Hold on one moment there. Okay, I'm back. And yep, that is exactly what it needed. So you know what? When you're making your bread, grab a fork as well because the yeast will start to get sticky and clumpy and you wanna be able to break that up quick automatically it's kicking off. So that was that quick, just to break up those. I don't know if you can see, but now we're getting bubbles in there. Okay, my oven is already warmed up. And now we are going to add in 
my littlest one is trying to come into the kitchen. It's okay if she comes in. All right, so now we are going to add in our tablespoon of brown sugar. We are gonna add in our teaspoon of salt, and we are gonna add in our two tablespoons of butter. Okay, and we are going to mix that in. The sugar is what the yeast eats. And now we are going to take our two cups of whatever milk you decide to use, two cups of room temperature milk. We're gonna give that a little stir. All right, now we are going to take our four cups of flour. This is why we have it divided because we're just gonna quickly, we know that the four cups is gonna fit in there. We are going to just dump that in and we are gonna start stirring. Here, I'm gonna move this bowl. Why don't you come right on in here because I want everybody to see this. Come a little closer. Okay, so. Do you see how it's starting to get kind of pasty? But yet there's still some water down in there, okay? Down at the bottom. This is where bread making gets a little frustrating because you gotta kind of eyeball it. All right, and that's why we have two extra cups here and we are gonna see how much of this we can fit in to get it to the right consistency because you don't want it to separate. We're gonna slowly add this, slowly add this, okay? I have about a half a cup in there and you're kinda gonna start like folding it in. See how it's starting to like cover on some sections and, and start to separate it? This is where, when it starts doing that too much, is when you, you gotta stop adding in the, the flour. Um, it's following my spoon when I move it. It's, see how it's following? So we're only gonna get a little bit extra in here. And you don't need to know the exact amount of the two extra cups. See how it's really not incorporating so well right? This is when you know you've put in just about as much as it can handle. When you have to start kneading it is when you know you've gone too far. All right, it's a little sticky so this is when we're gonna, we gotta go so slow with how much we add. And you are, the more you make this, the easier and quicker it's gonna be because you can just, you know, you're gonna get a feel for it. You're gonna know what work, you know, what works for you, for the way that you like it. Um, you can play around with that amount of extra flour, the two extra cups in addition to the four that you just automatically dump in for the recipe. All right, I'm gonna say that that is about all that we can fit in here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'll take a little bit of this extra flour over here. This that way. I like to work in a clean little environment. I'm gonna move the bread from yesterday out of the way. And I am going to, just to start, I'm going to, I'll need a few times on here and then I'm going to add it to the mixer. Okay. So I spread, I got a little kneading tray here. I'm going to dump this guy out. Okay. There we go. I'm going to get him right in the sink. All right. And 
Here we go. So when you're kneading, right, you're just putting it into a ball, pushing, folding, okay? Now you're pushing and you're folding. And it's gonna start off a little sticky, right? Folding in, pushing, pushing, come back. You hear that pounding in the background? That is just one of my daughters dancing. Francesca's dancing, okay. All right, so this is it. All right, so you would need for this first step is a 10 minute knead, okay? Which now that you have it all incorporated, you can, it's already starting to spring, all right? It's just pushing, kneading, you don't need to worry about the technique of the kneading. You're just really pushing it um, because we're not shaping this bread because we have we have the bread pans right here that are going to shape it for us. All right, so here, that's actually a little sticky spot. So I'm going to, because I don't like the feel of that, add some of the extra flour because we know we're not putting in too much if we're just working from our extra our two, two cups, right? All right, so... We could do this for 10 minutes. Uh, I am going to add it to a mixer at this point. I should not have put that bowl in. I'm not gonna add it to a mixer because I just put the bowl in the sink. Phoenix, can you start the um, timer for 10 minutes? And as you are kneading, this. Don't worry, I, I'll try to edit this and make it faster for you. Uh, but I do want to, before we start speeding along on this, I do want you to know that you are kneading for 10 minutes or until it feels silky smooth, when it's no longer sticky and it is smooth to the touch is when you know that you have uh, activated that glue in and it is starting to transform into your bread, okay? So just we are going to knead this for 10 minutes and I will get back to you after we're done with the kneading process. Okay, so we've done our, come back up here and let's talk about what happened. Okay, so we kneaded the dough. We now have, hey Raffaella. We now have, hold on girls. They want to play with it. They think it's the Play-Doh we make. Um, so now we are going to put this into the bowl. Hold on, sweetie. Everything that could go wrong is going wrong right now. Um, so we're going to put this bread into our grease bowl. I am going to wet a terry cloth. If you have saran wrap, you can put that on. I uh, don't like to have that stuff in the house, uh, so I'm gonna work with a damp cloth here. Warm damp cloth. Come here, Princessa. Okay. And I'm gonna pop this in the oven for 40, come here, baby. Come here. I know, you wanna play. Mommy will make you play the while we're waiting. Mommy will make you play the while we're waiting. Yeah. All right, so I am going to pop this into the oven that I had already pre-warmed. Um, and we are going to let this rise for an hour, hour and a half until it doubles in size. I am going to, while we're waiting, make this little girl some Play-Doh so that she can have fun with the process of creating as well. I will get back to you. So I will get back to you in one hour. Okay, everybody. Hi. All right. It has been 45 minutes and our bread has been uh, hanging out in the stove for that whole time. Warm. It's draft free and it has been rising. Now, during that uh, time, I thought about what I wanted to say about the little incident that happened while I was kneading that bread um and i uh you know i wound up breaking all of my mixing bowls except for one the one that the bread is in right now 
uh, what happened was, was that while I was kneading, I'm using this, um, it's actually a folding table. I, I brought it in because I figured it would be a better angle so that everybody could see what was going on here and how I was fixing this bread up. And uh, the legs collapsed in while I was kneading the bread and everything went sliding off. I was managed to catch the dough so that didn't touch the ground. And I just finished up that knead and cleaned up afterward. Um, so another quick little tip is do not knead your bread on a wobbly surface. Make sure it is on a counter instead of a wobbly folding table. Okay, so let's, uh, now that we got that out of the way, let's get back to business. And let's check to see what happened in that 40 five minutes to an hour in the oven. Let's see what our dough did. I don't know about your dough, but my dough rose all the way to the top. It doubled in size, which is exactly what we want to happen. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to, this is the next step, and we are going to push the bread down we are deflating, it's not bread yet, right? We are deflating the dough. We are pushing it down to get all of the air out. And now we are going to tip it onto our surface. Let's hope my table doesn't collapse this time, guys. And we are going to, now that it is rolled out, we are going to continue to knead for five minutes. If you have a mixer, you can just check it right back into the mixer with the kneading attachment on and you can knead for five minutes. Me, I am going to hand knead for five minutes and hope that we don't lose this table again. Okay, so here we go. Five minutes, let's do this. That was about five minutes we have 18 seconds left. I have a little helper who helped me, so that helped me cut down on time. So now what we have is we have our kneaded dough out on our counter, and we are going to come a little closer with the camera, and we're going to tip it down because we want to see what is about to happen. All right, so I have my bread flattened. Well, not my bread yet, right? The dough flattened out. And we are going to cut it in half, okay? Because we are going to, now we're gonna shape our loaves. We have two pans, dun, 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 dun. They have a little bit of oil on them. All right, so we're gonna take one side and we are gonna start shaping it by pushing it forward and tucking under two. We're gonna tuck the ends. You're gonna do it too. You're gonna you're gonna roll under and tuck, okay? Roll under and tuck, and we're gonna keep on see. You can, you're gonna push this side under. We're gonna tuck in our edges. There we go. Yeah, we are gonna push and tuck, push and tuck. And we're just shaping it just ever so. I'm gonna measure it up to my loaf pan here, and it looks a, looks pretty good. All right, so we are gonna transfer these over to our pan, see? Doesn't that look nice? You wanna do it too? All right, so you're gonna pick it up. Yeah, the girl. Yep, put it right in there. Oh, so yours is gonna be a little shorter, that's okay. No, we're not gonna push it down. We're not gonna push it down, we're just gonna tuck it in. There you go, all right. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna re-wet, now we have two cloths. Okay, we're gonna leave it be now, right? <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we are gonna leave them be and we are gonna, we're gonna wet these little cloths, terry cloths. No, oh, leave it be. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna cover our bread. Just making them nice and damp. See, this is fun for the whole family to do. Nice damp cloths, we're covering them. Warm water always, we don't want it to be cold yet. And I am going to 
talk to you like this. There we go. I am going to, you're covering yours? Good job. She's such a good little helper. Um, I'm going to set these on top of the oven now because I am going to preheat my oven to 350 degrees because that's what we will be baking. Right now we are going to proof for an additional 45 minutes or until it's doubled in size. So I will get back to you when our bread has, our dough has risen. Hi guys, 45 minutes has happened. I wound up putting the bread into the oven to get that rise that I needed and um, it worked really well. So now I'm just gonna brush the bread with some milk to just crisp up that crust and pop it in the oven. We are preheated to, okay. we are preheated to 350. Uh -huh. We are putting the bread into the oven and baking for 40 minutes and then you too uh -huh. will have your bread. Pizza. I hope you enjoyed I this can. video. I hope you consider joining us as we become independent and sustainable together. Have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye!